How's it going guys? It's Mr. Lone Wolf, and uh, today I'm going to go and do a contract called Serious Business. I believe it's in the third set of contracts. Um, yeah, I've got to go and get some gold from the map and deliver it. Sadly, you can't rob it and pocket it for yourself. Um, yeah, the first lot, for some reason, the first three cargo of gold is in the kind of bottom right hand corner, which is a warehouse we haven't really had to do much with before. And then the last five pieces are in the bottom left at the... Uh, I think it's not a quarry quarry, but I don't know, it's like we've been there before, we had to collect um, railroad tracks from there and stuff. Um, yeah, there's another five there, and then after I've got that, cut up the left hand side of the map, and you've got to drop it all off at the railway station. So for this mission, because there's eight lots of gold in total, uh, obviously you're going to need eight slots of cargo, or room for eight. Um, as well though, because they're kind of manually loaded on the map, you need a vehicle that can have a crane as well to load them. So. For example, if you wanted to do like the um, Colob with an 8 slot trailer, you sort of, it wouldn't be ideal really because, uh, yeah, you haven't got a crane. So there is actually, which is weird because this first uh, warehouse I'm going to that's got three slots of cargo, there's a, a forklift there, the Cat 357 or whatever it was. Um, and this time when I actually drove near it, it said truck discovered and you can use the forklift for that so strictly speaking you don't need a crane for the first three but unless you towed then that forklift with you to the next location there's nothing else at the second location that can help you like load the cargo um yeah but when i've been exploring this map before i actually drove into this original warehouse um i found that cat drove near it and it didn't say truck discovered or anything so i've kind of been wondering for a while just sort of in the back of my mind like oh, i wonder what that's for, I wonder how we get that, and then I seen this mission and I kind of figured out oh, it must help us with the gold, but I thought, oh, maybe it's like just a mission specific forklift that you're allowed to use while you're doing this mission. But I believe really, I mean, once you find it, it's uh, it says truck discovered, so, and I could drive it and everything, so yeah, in technically, um, if you sell that as well, you end up getting like a pretty fat chunk of money from this mission. To be fair, in this phase, at least there has ended up being a couple of different scenarios where they've actually let us keep vehicles or you just flat out find a vehicle on the map with um, was it phase 8 even there was quite a few vehicles that you find but the game just takes it afterwards so obviously you don't get to cash it in or anything um, yeah so swerving into it like I said I don't actually think we've used this yard for anything else trying to make the corner um, yeah, that's why I ended up bringing the pay star in the end, because like I say, I needed eight slots of cargo, which obviously this can hold seven, I've got a three slot um, sideboard and then the trailer, and then I was going to either wear one like a hat or just stack it on the uh, top of the three slot cargo. And uh, yeah, got a goddamn horse for me, mainly because I knew fuel was going to be a bit of a major issue uh, on this mission, because the pay star, yeah, is a thirsty old beast. And it depends really, it's one of them where if you can keep the pace going in high gear, you make quite good headway for the amount of fuel you're using but in this game especially at the minute because it seems to keep like forcing you to stay in first gear in auto in quite a lot of places at that point you're crawling pretty slowly and you are kind of nailing the fuel then um yeah as there was this forklift for the first mission and it's pretty damn rare i'm not really going to get this thing out kind of on purpose <laughs> i mean i kind of ended up loading this one for you know the forklift is here sakes um, but too, I mean, it gives you an idea really of how how much slower it is than the crane. And even though I am a little bit rusty with it, I kind of edited most of the first one out because that's where I was like particularly rusty trying to figure out which buttons raise and lower the uh, the arm and everything. But yeah, th these kind of second and third boxes weren't weren't the slowest effort. It's not even got like a fast way to access the cr uh, the arm on this thing. Like you have to scroll down the menu and go to the forklift controls. If you could at least just do a bit like how you access the crane, if you just sort of press up on the D-pad to bring that menu up and then press square, at least that would make things flow a bit easier and it'd sort of it'd be a bit quicker. Kind of having to stop to scroll down the menu is, uh, yeah, doesn't feel very, yeah, fluent. It just it feels a little bit patchy and awkward. And again, I mean, once you uh, got it like, you know, you've lifted the box up and everything yeah just to tip it off is 
you've kind of got to access the menu again and whilst you access the menu you're not moving the vehicle so I'm only tipping the forks but I can't reverse at the same time so yeah it's all just a little bit clunky and as I've said before it's not a bad effort it's actually a pretty decent forklift it drives quite nicely um, definitely I remember it doesn't do very well in water it's got like no snorkel but the engine obviously sits pretty low um, yeah I mean it's not a bad effort it's just you're never going to get to be as quick as this crane really because just the fact that the crane kind of cheats in a way that it just you know you attach the cable to it it's not like a crane with pincers or whatever that's picking cargo up so that's just yeah the crane is easier quicker less hassle um but like i say it's pretty rare i ever get to use a forklift so i figured i'd give it a quick go and uh, i'll probably well, i'll very likely leave it there now but like I say in theory you could uh cash it in which if I remember correctly I think it was like not that cheap either I'm sure it was around like 130 grand so you uh yeah you end up getting a bit of a bit of a wodge for this mission and then now like I say this is where it makes the difference really if you can stay in high gear and keep a good pace going I'm probably up in the uh, low 30s like high 20s low 30s fuel a minute but I'm making a uh, yeah pretty good progress along the bottom of the map And they ended up putting uh, the muds on. The, it's the muds that are like slightly rounded at the edge. I've, I've, uh, to be honest, on this phase, I've kind of been f flicking between all the different tread pattern of muds and the chained. I kind of, it seems less. I don't know. I don't, I've not really noticed that much difference between all of them. I still think there is little perks here and there with the chained, but I also think uh, the muds have got the edge on like certain bits of terrain. Um, but yeah, these muds out of all of them, I remember doing the tyre testing ages ago and uh, these ended up faring pretty well. I've tried them on a few other vehicles and they've always uh, been a pretty solid pair. <laughs> yeah, that's what she said. Sounds like that was appropriate. Taking a bit of damage on the way, but I'm not too fussed about that. Just keeping the uh, momentum going. I've got a few. I was going through uh, earlier as well some of the trucks. I've got a couple of trucks I've got to do the gameplay and review on. Uh, someone was asking to do a gameplay and review on the K7M, that tractor, which I actually started in a way. I kind of went and had a mess around. I just knew in the end I was going to run out of time. Um, yeah, there's certain but I don't know. I'll get it done, but it's uh, it kind of doesn't suit the theme as well because it's a tractor and that, so... There's uh, some areas it's done alright, on some it's pretty hopeless, but in its defence it's a tractor, so <laughs> you probably wouldn't put it at the uh, the front of the list to be taking it out on various missions. This little patch here caught me out. I don't know if it's specifically the mud, I think there might have been a tree kind of lying across that was uh, catching on the axles, but again, everything feels relatively underpowered. There was a few times tonight where I'm sort of flooring it in either auto or low range, and my axles are all basically locked up, like it's just not feeding enough power to them to get them going. Um, yeah, I sort of think in this game, even though say you have X amount of power, like is the max available from the engine, I think when you're setting off from like naught to one, two miles an hour, I think it kind of feeds the power in. I, d I don't know, because I don't have a clue what I'm talking about when it comes to coding and all that, but I just... Uh, particularly recently, it's not the only vehicle that's been doing it. I mean, that new Derry is theoretically the most powerful vehicle that's been doing it I'm, it's one of them things that you rarely ever had happen on this game for like the first two years easily yeah it's very rare it actually just kind of lock in place and even though you're flooring it with full revs and everything it's just staying still um, whereas I've had it happen pretty frequently really on this phase Off the accelerator a bit there, don't overcook it around the corner. Like I say, this southern road running along the bottom of the map is a pretty nice road to drive as well. It's uh, it's pretty fair, pretty reasonable. There's the odd patch of mud like that one I previously went through and this one, but for the most part, you can actually just sit in high gear and it's not too violent, it doesn't tip too much left or right, really. Kind of. Yeah, as long as you're paying a bit of attention. And like I said, that's the sort of pace I like. I don't want to go sort of, yeah, 100 miles an hour because it 
doesn't feel correct or anything on this game anyway, and you'll be bouncing around like a lunatic, but yeah, a bit faster than this most of the time, although in little patches like this I don't really mind it, but you can see this is where it now eats the fuel by comparison. I mean, it's still going up into like the 20s, probably mid-20s, and uh, yeah, barely crawling along really. But that's where the game just certain bits it um it's not too bad through that swampy section because that kind of makes sense and feels pretty balanced and all the rest of it i can kind of expect to go that slow there's just certain patches along roads like this where some places will let you tick along in high quite merrily other places yeah it's just clearly been coded to like lock you in first gear and uh, that's when it starts costing you i don't know for me a bit of boredom creeps in <laughs> when i'm going that slow but yeah the amount of fuel it's uh Pissing down the river. Quite like that crossing there. And in theory, I mean, I'm bringing a ramp flatbed for this. Obviously, you're going to need enough uh, room for all the cargo. When I was testing the uh, rail tracks that are at this warehouse I'm heading to now in the bottom left, I actually already had taken like semi trailers, a step deck, and a ramp flatbed to this yard. So in theory, if I really wanted, I could have set off without the ramp flatbed, but I kind of thought, yeah, unless, you know, you've done the same kind of thing and already got a ramp flatbed pre-planted there, and then to do this mission you're going to have to take one, so I figured I'll, uh, I'll do it the proper way, even though, yeah, I've got a, a nice selection of trailers going on there at the minute. There's another little uh, awkward section here. I mean, this pay style does come in pretty handy, though, for essentially these eight-slot missions. Obviously, it is only seven-slot, but with a crane as well. The fact that it's got a three-slot sideboard and you can still have a crane and a trailer is, uh, yeah, pretty cool. Like I said, I think the only other thing is Bruce that can have the three-slot, but I'm 99% certain, unless they've changed it recently, when you put the three-slot uh, sideboard on Bruce, you can't have the crane as well, which... I don't know, it just kind of negates the point for the most part. There's probably a few rare circumstances where it wouldn't really matter and it'd just be better off having the extra cargo room, but yeah, the fact that I could do a two slot, take a crane, and then just wear a piece of cargo like a hat, which is perfect on Bruce because I've got a nice big flat square roof. Uh, yeah, it, they're just, it does, it's not really, the sacrifice isn't really worth it. Whereas this vehicle, uh, well, this is probably the, is it the third time I've ended up? taking this vehicle out on this phase it just sort of suits it pretty well it's nice though because uh, it's one of the American vehicles the Russian vehicles tend to get the sort of lion's share of gameplay and everything because they're generally more kind of custom high-end off-road and stuff but and another nice thing with this pay style is you can actually have the muds on it so it is one of the few uh, American vehicles that can see crawling up this hill this was probably one of the big killers of fuel really even though overall I mean I wasn't exactly going to make this mission with just the fuel on board, but as soon as you went through that patch of mud, like a bit further down the hill, that made me go into auto. And then, yeah, creeping up here, I'm still in like mid 20s, but going extremely slow, and that's where it won't let me get out of first gear. I think back in the day it probably could have. I mean, to be fair, I am carrying, well, I was going to say quite a bit of cargo. I've got a crane, got three cargo trailer, and a goddamn horse. Um, but yeah, if it let me, like, even into second, I could have got a bit more pace up there. Certainly wouldn't let me into high gear. But if it did let me into second, then it would let me in high gear. Uh, low range is obviously just as slow. Even though I can then use the diffs, it sort of balanced out to be about the same speed regardless. So we're, uh, yeah, coasting into this warehouse on fumes, really. And I was going to pull up this way, but I thought, well, I've got like 10 litres of fuel left, I'll just loop round here. Yeah, there's one of the trailers I brought, it's a sideboard. That blue sideboard is the one that was already there, and then yeah, i got a step deck and a ramp flatbed there, but... Needed uh, something to transport me loaf with as well, I suppose. And then yeah, these are the other five uh, cargoes of gold. I 
a little bit of editing there because it's just faffing around with this crane really, nothing too exciting. Um, load four lots of cargo up onto that trailer. I did load the first two, I think, whilst the trailer was attached to me, but in the end, because obviously I've got like a three slot side bed board or whatever, not a two slot, the crane doesn't quite reach as easily, so it was just easier in the end to disconnect the trailer, load the other two packages on, uh, yeah, reconnect the trailer, pack the cargo, that's seven of them on. I've also, as you can see at the back, I've kind of got the ramps down and the loaf is actually on the ramps, so he's playing like the floor is lava, he is still winning. Got them professional. And yeah, I quite like doing this, not that strictly speaking I'd recommend it, but if you leave the ramps down, well, I click activate ramps to pack them because then it'll lift these little legs from under the ramps. Um, but yeah, essentially, like with those ramps, you've still got extra room. I could pack the loaf on. I've already transferred, I believe, the fuel now to the Paystar. I think it's taken all the fuel anyway, but I've got a bit of repairs. I think, in fact, there's about 9 litres of uh, fuel left in the loaf. And I believe at this point, my plan was... I kind of knew it was very likely I'm going to run out of fuel. If I left 9 litres in the loaf, this thing will just burn 9 litres while it's sat there. Sort of shuddering as it's about out of fuel. The loaf can travel far and wide on 9 litres, so I could always send him off <laughs> to go and scavenge from some other vehicles um, and bring some fuel back, do a little fuel run for me. See now look, there's one of those times where I mean it's almost like when you're running out of power, say in high gear or whatever and your vehicle's slowing down, if you just happen to get it say into auto just as the vehicle comes to a stop basically and then you floor it, it's then when it's like really awkward on refeeding the power. Um, and yeah, at that point it wouldn't even let me drive forward, I had to basically do a winch from the trailer to that telegraph pole. And once you move in, as soon as you go in, you know, one mile an hour, as soon as you've got about half a metre, it's you could then drive under your own steam. But obviously in certain situations, if you can't reach anything with a winch, it's, yeah, it's all well and good that as soon as you set off it'll kick back in and feed the power, but you could just be stuck there. And you see that's another example, I mean, get yourself a loaf. If I was stuck there and there was no winch place reachable, I could detach the loaf, drive him in front, have him as a mobile winch point, give me enough boost just to set me off. And uh, yeah, could uh, save you bacon as well. And at this point, I could in theory carry on like, if I split off to the right and go back down the road, I came up and sort of go the main roadway north on the map really, but I cut off to the left here. I'd I don't know, it's, a, it's one of those paths you don't really need to use, but I quite like it. It's actually a reasonably fair path for like a random little narrow sort of thing that's going along the edge of the map that, again, isn't. it sort of runs parallel really to the main road, so um, yeah, it's just a nice little journey, so they've made it pretty fair and reasonable. Um, at this point, I think I got sort of bogged down in the mud again where I was going pretty slow, and uh, I don't know, this time I decided to get the loaf off, transfer the last 9 litres and set off. I kind of, by the way, I knew it wasn't the loaf because I've used him many, many times. <laughs> I know my loaf. Um, but yeah, just for the sakes of proving it slash curiosity and that, I was like, I'll get him off the trailer just to make sure it's not that that's slowing my vehicle down. And I don't think it was. It's just, yeah. So it's starting to do it again. That was a glitch there, not on edit. See, and that's in... Well, I'm in auto now. I went down to low range diffs on and everything and it was still locked in place. I do believe there's a rock just in front of the tyre on the trailer. Which is not helping, but again... I'd like to see a little bit more kind of wheel spin and effort going on once we got over that though. I mean, the first time I went down this track, I ended up turning off even further left, and you, there's kind of a road running up the top of this cliff to the left. Uh, I went up there with the Taiga, the Tony the Taiga. Um, there was no point on this mission anyway, and then you would basically end up coming back down there and rejoin this road, so yeah. Not only was there no point, but I'd, uh, I'd just be wasting more fuel and all the rest of it. And then now I could see it was leaning. I remember that one little bit there almost had me tipped with a Tager. I got kind of a lucky bounce really and kept on my wheels. 
back then. Uh, yeah, this thing started to tip though. Probably doesn't help with a crane kind of up in the air and everything. Um, yeah, two cargo basically jumped out of the sideboard. I kind of kept the first two pinned with a crane. I didn't actually tip over. I can still start my engine and that, but when I did the winch, I couldn't reach a tree. So I'm basically kind of stuck there. So, it's goddamn horse time. Here's one I prepared earlier. Had one um, stashed nearby. Uh, yeah, with the dairy. It was a mission I did a while back. You see? I mean, in the end, it worked out pretty nicely, because... Is it just me? It distracted me. That basketball hoop I just drove past looked ridiculously low. <laughs> it looked like it was cheating. It was only about six foot off the floor, it looked. Um, yeah, it was quite nice sort of working out that I do proclaim the benefits of uh, stashing loaves here, there, and everywhere. This one worked out pretty nicely. I'll find a little shortcut through the forest. I mean, look at him go. See? That's a dead tree. The loaf doesn't get caught on it. Runs over it. I was looking around now and I was thinking, well, where the hell's my... I, I thought my pay star should be right there and I was like, where the bloody hell is it? So here is a road, but it doesn't really show up too well on the map. I think it's just a, I don't know, random little road. Not today, game. Um, yeah, like I say, now it pops back out onto the normal road. I was like, aha. See these rocks here? I've got to be about, about as tall as the loaf. I think that's fair to say. I mean, look at him go. Oh my god, it glitched. Well, I can assure you, he flew up there. Why do you have to glitch on that one little bit? Like, as far as the glitches go, they do sometimes seriously pick, like, out of a whole video. You're like, really? <laughs> that was the, the one second you decided to delete? And yeah, this is there's two reasons, or probably three reasons, I wanted to bring a loaf over. Uh, one, I knew I could poke these cargo back into the sideboard, which obviously saves more messing around with the crane. Uh, secondly, to flip the paystar back to its wheels, and thirdly, because I also need, knew I'd need the extra fuel. I was just going to drive down and go round, but then just at the last second I was like, oh, I wonder if I could push it this way. It was going a little bit, but what I didn't want to do was instead of it tipping to its wheels, if it started pushing, you know, like tipping sideways and sort of, at the minute at least it's sort of leaning on a rock. So yeah, I didn't want to uh, risk it like fully tipping. Tried winching it there, got a bit of a wobble on. See, loaf stalled, but then just turn the key harder and he fires up. And then now, under his own volition, just see, starts tipping back to his wheels. Is that those little magical weight shifts? That that's just one of many reasons to get yourself a loaf. He gets out of it. He's not done his mission yet. Um, yeah, it all sort of makes it a bit awkward around there because there's rocks and hills at awkward angles. One thing, they, if they do a snowrunner tour or whatever, if they could improve the camera angles a little bit, you know, it's alright when you're on flat ground, but once you go on sort of, yeah, angles, sometimes the camera is either forced to point in the air or look at the floor. It's, it'd be nice if they uh, got a bit smoother with that. But yeah, wedged myself behind that tree. And uh, yeah, that was it. Which, funnily enough, you see... The winch, he's, uh, the winch, <laughs> the loaf, he's got plenty of length, that's what she said of course. Uh, the paystar couldn't reach the tree, but the loaf can park behind the tree and still reach the paystar. Hence, get yourself a loaf, he's got a longer winch. Um, but, and I mean, there's a prime example though, that made the difference. If I didn't have the loaf around, I couldn't reach the tree with the paystar. I'd be uh, sat there for a while. To be fair, as the engine was still running, and I've got a crane, my main option I would have tried, if I just say I didn't bring any loaf, uh, it'd be to push the crane into the ground and see if I can tip myself back to my wheels, a bit like I did in yesterday's video near the end on Lost Cargo with the Derry. But yeah, loaf, goddamn horse, save the day. Um, I transferred all the fuel over as well, so I'm near enough. Uh, was it completely full tank? Uh, maybe not quite. Close though. I think I was well. Loaf saved like one litre for himself. So he's not greedy. I'll go everywhere on that. That one litre of fuel. Should be given some kind of environmental award. Like Greta Loafberg. No, she's definitely not. <laughs> Too much of a goddamn professional for that.
you can see this random little track that sort of runs up the left hand side that isn't the main road yeah it's quite a nice little uh, drive in the end and even though I think overall the main road uh, technically it's going to be a little bit more distance on the main road but I'd easily be willing to bet obviously for the most part you'll be travelling like in high gear there was though if I followed the road back out of the warehouse where I got the second lot of gold from there is quite a big swampy patch as I connect back to the main road there so that would have ate quite a bit of fuel just getting through that but then after that you kind of yeah on main road then I'd go past uh, where I just got that white loaf from that was near the dairy which there was a truck repair service thing there if there was a fuel thing I would have gone that way and refueled that way but since there isn't like I say that's uh, just one of the many benefits of stashing loaves here there and everywhere you can see as well I hit a tree on the ground back there and that flinged me around I mean to be fair that's one thing I've always liked about pinching the cargo uh, with the crane like I've done sort of just pinning the last piece of cargo because I mean I've rolled and that crane kept those first two pieces of cargo in the sideboard uh, I just hit that tree which kind of stopped me dead and pinged me around all over the place I didn't lose my cargo there um, yeah it just it actually pins onto it pretty well and I don't even believe at the minute Uh, I don't know, winch, or oh, maybe I have. I d it doesn't really make much difference. I was going to say maybe I've still got the cable attached from like, the crane to that last piece of cargo. But yeah, I don't think that's what's keeping it pinned anyway, because if it was, you'd see it wiggling around a bit. It'd just keep moving until it's like goes tight on the rope. But just the crane being like pinched down enough just uh, yeah keeps it all locked in place. And then, yeah, basically, I'm now reconnecting to what is the main road. Sort of use that term loosely at the minute, as it's kind of like a, uh, a dirt back road. Yeah, sounds pretty dodgy, that does. And, yeah, again, it's one of those where if it ain't letting you out of first gear, it's drinking the fuel that's getting up to the high 20s, then. This is not the kind of speed you want. There's a little glitch there as well. All I did was severely swerve left because I was just clipping that tree. Those burned trees on the ground are a nightmare. And then yeah, finally downhill with the wind behind me. Stick it in high gear. Get a bit of a move on. That's the gateway to the left of me. try and carry as much momentum as I can. I sort of don't like this section. <laughs> it's the one bit that hogs. It just eats your momentum and everything. You kind of, if you can skirt along the edge there, you obviously miss most of the water. And some vehicles I have been able to keep the pace going. To be fair, this did, did actually make it to the other side of the water. It's still in high gear now, so I can't really knock it. It's really this next section, I suppose, next to this P5, 12 and loaf that it's quite boggy mud, it just automatically slows you down, sort of forces you out of high gear. At this point, just to keep, for the sake of keeping the video a bit shorter, I times 8 speed this, because all along here, fuel wasn't really an issue anymore, it was just crawling really slowly, kind of, mainly forcing me to stay in first gear, so, yeah, all that section there was just sped up 8 times quicker, so, probably just cut like a minute and a half on out of the video of yeah again this thing crawling pretty damn slowly um yeah turning into the rail yard i used to have two navistars here but i deleted them recently off the map because just glitching and yeah still got them though the pair of dolphins uh, and a loaf and there's something else there as well actually i can't remember which truck might be a taiga again there's a is that a hx520 with a loaf in it um yeah get here drop the cargo off all eight of them. Seven. And then, yeah. Dis oh, so I did have the winch cable attached. Yeah, disconnect that though. Click pack cargo, get that in. Done. It says there as well, were you not tempted to drive off with the gold and then something about you being a goddamn professional? It's like it was about time the loaf got recognised for what a goddamn horse he is. Um, yeah, to be fair though, at least you do actually get a pretty good payout for this mission. 25 grand is fair, so even though we didn't steal the gold still a pretty good lump sum and like I say you can sell that forklift as well but yeah that's about it for today though uh, I hope you've enjoyed I hope that helps thanks for watching thanks to our Patreon members get yourself a loaf because he'll get you home and I'll be back soon